gonna let me down You're never gonna let You're never gonna let me down No, you won't You're never gonna let You're never gonna let me down <laughs> You're never gonna let You're never gonna let me down Come on, sing it out You're
Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for expanding our vision. Hallelujah. Expanding our vision to see your perfect plan fulfilled in our lives. Help expand the picture on the inside of us to get a greater vision and greater insight into what Jesus did at the cross. That we would be filled to the fullness and overflowing, Father, of knowing who you are, knowing your plan, knowing your desire for each one of us. We're gonna go ahead and take communion this morning. And the communion table is such an amazing, to me it's really, it's, a, it's an act of, it's definitely an act of a, 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 a religious ritual, so to speak, but, but more importantly, it is an act of worship. It's, it's an act of praise. It's an act of, uh, of where we focus on his redemption. It, and, and, you know, as I was praying this morning, you know, it, the, taking communion is a celebration of God's goodness. It's a celebration of God's goodness. We were just talking about he's good. He's good. He'll never let us down. He's good. He's good. He'll never let us down. And, and so as you're, you know, what is that, what is that revelation of he's good based in? is based in what Jesus did at the cross. It's based on what he did at Calvary. It's based on when he had, when he had stripes that were laid upon his back. You know, that was, that was God's goodness for you and for me. Jesus hanging on the cross and, and he crying out to the Father. He goes, he goes, why have you forsaken me? For you and I, that was his goodness. That was his goodness. Crown of thorns in his head, blood running down his, his forehead, down his sides, off of his feet. You know, that was torment to Jesus. But you know what? For you and I, that was his goodness. You know, he was laid into a borrow, and he was laid into a tomb that was borrowed. That was for our, that was for our goodness, that was his goodness in our lives. That was for us. Yes. He, he spent three days in, in, in hell. Yes. The word says that he led captivity captive. Yes. It said that he went and he said he preached the gospel to those that were broken in bondage. Yes. He preached the gospel there. That was for our, that was his goodness for you and I. But then we know that on that third day, we know that he, he rose again. That was his goodness. Why will praises ever be on our lips? Because of his goodness. Hallelujah. We don't praise God because, because someone cheerleads us to. We don't, we don't praise God because it's just, no, it's because of his goodness. We lift our hands because of his goodness. We, we shout because of his goodness. We dance because of his goodness. 
<coughs> My desire is that this morning you'd be overtaken by his goodness. Hallelujah. I want to read, read some scriptures to you real quick before we take communion. You know, because, because Jesus said, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. See, what, why do we praise? Because we're remembering. Why do you shout? Because you're remembering. Hallelujah. In Psalms 145, it says, I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Just receive this and allow this to get deposited into your heart this morning. Every day will I bless thee and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty works. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. And men shall speak of the might of thy terrible acts, but I will declare thy greatness. They shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness and shall sing of thy righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all. The Lord is good to all. His tender mercies are over all his works. All thy works shall praise thee. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. They shall speak of thy glory and thy kingdom, talk of thy power, to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. The kingdom is an ever thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. The Lord upholds all that fall and raises up all those that are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou open thy hand and satisfies the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy are all his works. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will, he will fulfill the desires of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. The Lord preserves all them that love him, but all their wicked will be destroyed. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord and let all the flesh, let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We bless you this morning. We praise you this morning. We exalt you this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you for your goodness, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Father. So as we take communion, we're remembering your goodness. Everything we just read in Psalms 145 was what God, what, what, through Jesus gave us access to be able to receive every aspect of his goodness. Every scripture I read to you became a reality to you when you made Jesus the Lord of your life. So when we remember, man, we're not just, we're not remembering necessarily just his death and his, his, his death, but we're remembering his resurrection and the covenant that you and I have been I like this word, established in. Hallelujah. A new covenant established upon better promises. Oh, Father, we lift the bread to you, which is your body that's been broken for us. You were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. That chastisement of our peace was upon you. And with those stripes, we were made whole. This bread represents the manna that you fed the children of Israel in the wilderness. And I thank you that you, hallelujah, you are fresh manna in our lives. You are the bread of life. So Father, as we take of your bread, we take of your body this morning, we recognize that you are all sufficient Savior for everything that we need, spirit, soul, and body. And as we take this, I thank you that we receive healing, we receive wisdom, we receive direction, Hallelujah. And most important, we praise you forever and ever. We take of your body in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. And likewise, Jesus lifted up the cup on the night that he was betrayed. This is a cup that represents mercy. 
mercy. In the Old Testament, the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies and take the blood of the animal and sprinkle it on what they would call the mercy seat. Thank you that when you rose from the dead, you told the disciples, you said, don't handle me, don't touch me because I haven't yet ascended to the Father. That's mean because he was, he was on purpose going to the true holy of holies to take his blood and sprinkle it on the true mercy seat because he is, because Jesus is mercy because that seat was for mercy so we could come boldly to the throne of grace because of his mercy we have been able to come boldly to you and receive grace so as we receive of your body your blood this morning father we remember the access that we have in the covenant the new covenant that we have and everything that that covenant's produced it's a covenant of flourishing it's a covenant of blessing it's a covenant of prosperity. It's a covenant of wholeness and healing. It's a covenant of blessing. So we remember your blood and we take of your blood in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. For you are good. Good. For you are good. Good. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You are good. We receive your goodness. Welcome his goodness. Hallelujah. We welcome your goodness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for your goodness. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are good. You're good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you this morning, Father. We praise you this morning. Hallelujah. Your goodness. Your goodness. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now that psalm said, one generation shall praise your wonderful works to another. Hallelujah. Let's take that moment and give him a shout of praise right now and release your faith in his goodness. So good to see you this morning. And I believe throughout this morning, we're going to continue to step in into a greater understanding of God's goodness. And you will not leave here the way you came. Amen. You will not leave here the way you came. If you're watching by way of internet, you will not be the same when you're done watching today's service. Because the Lord will manifest in your life right where you are. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, God is good. Why don't you take this time and just... Just greet one another and welcome them to Heritage of Faith. And tell how good it is to see them. God, amen. 
Happy New Year, everyone. Amen. God is so good. What a wonderful, wonderful time in the presence of the Lord this morning. We're going to uh, receive the tithes and offerings this morning. You think about what Pastor Justin just ministered to us. Um, a lot of times people, you know, think, you know, the covenant that he cut with us and the relationship that he did is he brought us back into the right relationship that we had with God before Adam and Eve fell. Amen? That's, a new, that's the covenant that he brought us back in, in line with. And it's so important to recognize that. Even in the garden, though, God commissioned Adam and Eve to take care of something, and that was the tree of life. Amen? A good, it's so important. And, and that's part of what your ties and what my ties are to God. It's a, it's a portion of what I'm responsible to say, hey, God, this is yours, and I'm not going to touch this. All right? Come on. You have to have faith in that. Remember, the faithful, we are the faithful, and the faithful live by faith. Right? And so we've got to continue to, to stir up ourselves where our faith is concerned, understanding that that is a covenant that is part of our covenant with God Almighty. Is He's just saying, hey, honor me with your first, with the ten, first 10% of what comes into you, and then I'm going to open the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing. There's not room enough to receive it. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, is what the Lord says. So it's so important for us to recognize, even in taking communion, the covenant, part of that covenant that God uh, reconnected us with was a, a, a covenant of blessing. He wants us to increase more and more, to abound, amen? to flourish and to have days of glory on earth, amen? And that's his desire for each and every one of us. But we have to do it by faith. Our faith has got to be, it's not the amount that you give, it's the faith that you put behind what you're giving. Do you believe that that's God's desire for you? Do you believe that it is God's desire for you to be blessed and overflowing? And you, do, do you believe that? And you, sometimes you can be in the, in the journey of faith, and sometimes you can get a little weak where your faith is concerned, where your finances are concerned. Amen? And you've got to continue to stir yourselves up. I have to continue to stir myself up because God wants us to go from glory to glory, not just stay where we are right now. I am not the same person that I was when I first made Jesus the Lord of my life, and I'm not the same person that I first was when I first got a revelation that Jesus wanted me to be blessed financially. Amen? And so I've got to continue to cultivate that and be faithful with that, stir myself up where faith is concerned. Look at this in uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 7. Now, what I want you to look at in this scripture is you and I have... Look at 2018, and this is something that Pastor Cassie and I have done for years, is we'll look at our 2018 with a purpose on our heart. Lord, we want to give more than we gave the year before. We want to increase because we know the bountiful, the more you sow, the more you're going to grow. Amen? And it's, it's a scriptural uh, principle that you and I have. So wherever you are, yours is going to be different than mine and Pastor Cassie's. Amen? Everybody's just different, but you've got, you can make a commission on the inside of your heart. You have to purpose in your heart. Okay, God, you know, it may, it may be I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick to tithing. I'm not going to draw back from tithing anymore. I'm going to stay with it. I'm going to continue in the tithe. I'm going to be faithful to tithe in 2018. That could be exactly where you are. Or it could be just a starting, a stepping stone as you're just saying, I'm just going gonna to give at least this much. Okay, and, and just uh, we're, Dr. Svelle would always say baby steps. Sometimes you just have to take baby steps, amen? Sometimes you just got to give a little bit here, give a little bit more, give a little bit more, but eventually you want to be able to where you don't even think about your giving, amen? And when God asks you to do something, you do it. It says here in 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 7, in the Amplified, he who sows sparingly and grudgingly will also reap sparingly and grudgingly. He, this say, this is me. Say it again, this is me. The second part, it's he who sows generously that blessings may come to someone will also reap generously and with blessings. Let each one give as he or she has made up his own mind and purpose in his heart, not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion for God loves. He, this is, tell you, this is me. This is good. God loves you like this. God loves, he takes pleasure in, he prizes above other things, and is unwilling to abandon or to do without a cheerful, joyous, prompt to give it, prompt to do it giver whose heart is in his giving. Say, that's me. That's me, and that's part of who we are as a church. That's part of what we do as a church. We're looking to give more now in 2000. I know Pastor Justin's heart and what he shared with us, more than we've ever given before. Why? Because we're going to increase more than we've ever have increased before, amen? And it's proportionate to your 
purpose, what's in your heart, what has God given you, be faithful. Say, I will will. be faithful faithful. with my finances finances. in 2018. 2018. I will not withhold, withhold. but I will give give. generously, Generously. and I will reap reap. generously in 2018. Do you believe that? Amen. That's awesome. All right. We're going we're gonna to receive the tithes and the offering. If you're given by way of internet, there'll be some things on the screen that'll let you give. If you're also in here, you want to give text to give, all that'll be up here on the screen for you to give. Don't forget, in the process of our tithes and our offerings, we're also pressing forth in some building projects. So during this year, you'll see us. You can always t- text to give. And when you text to give, if you want it to go to building or to missions, all you have to do is text your amount that you want to give and put it towards the building. Say building, so it'll be money. Then you'll put building and then money and then missions. It's real simple, okay? We love you. We thank God for you. We know that you are abounding and you are flourishing in 2018, and we're going to see days of glory. Amen? Amen. The ushers will receive the tithes and offerings, and everybody else watch this video, all right? Hey, 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 check out what's going on at HFCC today. Sounds like a Raisin Cane's drive through greeting, I know, but it rhymed. Where was I? Oh, announcements, here we go. This Tuesday night, be there at Chariots of Life. Rhyming again, can't help it. Though when you think about just how many people are going to heaven because of motorcycles, think about it. Over 50,000 salvations and counting. Come out on Tuesday and see what it's about. What's up, everybody? G29 stands for Generation 29, as in the 29th chapter of the Book of Acts. Wait, there's only 28. Nope, our generation, this generation, is writing the 29th chapter every single day. Awesome, right? And besides all this, our youth group is flat out amazing. There's just no other way to put it. So, if you're in grades six through 12 and wanna hang with the in crowd, Join us Sunday and Wednesday nights as we dive in God's Word and get in God's presence. Hasta la vista! You wouldn't go out and eat a great meal and then wait three days to eat again, right? No way! You'd go to the grocery store, load up your cart so you can cook at home too. So, load up at the bookstore before you leave church. Books, MP3s, CDs, and even faith-filled doormats. Feed your faith, starve those doubts, and watch yourself grow, grow, grow. Visitation is a time where we focus our hearts and our souls as one corporate body to pursue the presence of God like never before. At each of our worship nights, we expect a fresh visitation from the Father as we worship Him with all that we are. We expect to see the miraculous as heaven invades earth. If you're new with us today, we want you to feel right at home here at Heritage. This is a safe place for you and your family. We're so glad that you chose to be with us and we would love to stay connected with you. See this card? You can find one in the seat back in front of you. Simply fill it out, tear off the bottom, and turn it into our first time visitors lounge. You'll receive a special welcome gift as you go. Amen. Man, so good to have you all this morning, the first Sunday of 2018. Uh, How many people got to watch us last week? (laughs) <laughs> I'm so glad that you, uh, you, if you hope, I'm glad you got the message to let you know we weren't going to have service, but, um, but thank you if you watched online and, and, and gave online, um, and I'm so glad that we have the ability with technology to be able to still have service even though it was icy, you know, and, uh, but we had an awesome time, and, and Annette and I, we enjoyed ourselves uh, tag teaming, and, and, and so this morning, um, the Lord told us also this Sunday to tag team as well, we're going to do the first Two Sundays in a row, and so, and so I want before before I release Annette to uh, share with what's on her heart, uh, I'm going to read the prophetic word because I, I believe that we constantly need to continue to you know, renew our minds or, or be be expectant, be expectant for really what God desires because this is a word coming from our founding pastor. So as a church, it's what we're standing on, not to see it as a church, but seeing it in your in, in individual lives. Amen. And so I'm, let's read it. Uh, 2018, days of glory, days of flourishing, and days of abounding. Continue to preach, teach, and emphasize the importance of faithfulness. It's still my plan for the faithful to flourish. If you will do this, then they will eventually get it. It's never been more important than right now for them to flourish in every area of their lives. These are indeed the days of my greater glory, says the Lord, and I will cause it to manifest for all who have remained faithful to me and faithful to my word. And I will cause them to flourish and to abound even as I have promised in my word. 
I will honor their loyalty to me by enabling them to overcome every attack of the evil one. And I will bring them into the greatest breakthroughs they've experienced thus far. Rest assured that I'm working in their behalf even now. And they shall triumph. And they shall be victorious. And all shall see that I'm still the God of the breakthrough. And I'm still the God that keeps covenant. So lift up your hands and lift up your voices and praise your God. The God who is like any other God. The God who blesses all who have been loyal and faith to him says the Lord. Amen. Welcome my beautiful wife Annette. Uh, hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. God is so good. So I was sitting over there trying to get the courage to come up here. I love God. He's so personal. He's really personal. Um, and if y'all have ever heard me speak in girlfriends, um, you know that the Lord several years ago gave me a P message and almost everything started with P's. Um, everything that I talked about, it was about a, a position, a, a place that he's purchased and given us. So as I was standing over there, he said, tell them you're going to talk about out of a personal relationship, how I change your perspective about a permissible pebble. Okay. <laughs> out of my personal relationship with him, he changed my perspective about a permissible pebble. Okay. Now that I've got you wondering, we're going to get there. Um, Last week, um, I shared about that the Lord had given me a word right before we left to go to um, Africa, to Kenya. And um, I, after reading it and, and meditating on it, I really just came to an understanding, and, which, which is what you do after you meditate on something that the Lord showed you in the Word. After a while, it becomes personal revelation. You, you kind of unfold it. And, and it is about days of glory. He said to me, make room for the harvest. Get out of the way. Amen. So, Amen. Make room for harvest. Get out of the way. And I didn't know exactly what that meant, but I wrote it down. And he said, pray and keep praying. And I knew it meant, he was talking about renewing my thinking. He said, renew your thinking to mine so that you're always in the right place at the right time where you're ready to affect and make a difference and you're ready to be affected by my power and ability. Obedience. Obedience will put you in the perfect place. Amen. Obedience. And a personal relationship. Trusting him with what he's told you. Um, I pray this morning that our hearts are receptive. I pray this morning that our hearts are not hardened to the word. But we have hearts of flesh that respond, that react accordingly to what he's telling us this morning. Father, I thank you for eyes that see and ears that hear. But mostly, Father, I thank you for a heart that understands, a heart that longs to hear from their father. I pray this in Jesus' name. Um, this past week... Well, last week I was talking about how in Romans 12 it talks about renewing your thinking and renewing your mind and not being conformed and thinking the way the world thinks, but being changed or transformed into how God wants us to think, right? Being greater than what we already are, greater, always changing. And, you know, there's some things that we allow in our lives that we think, it's not so bad, you know? It's not doing anything. And I didn't realize that, but, you know, the Lord had me go into, and I don't know why he had, now I, I do know, I do know why he had me there. Um, I want you to look at 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Not this dry. I've been going through 1 Corinthians. <laughs> and if you've read it, it's, it's crazy what Paul had to put up with, right? Yeah. It's like, these are the descendants of those that Moses had to deal with, apparently. <laughs> the grumblers and complainers and comparing and judging. And, and um, so Paul is here. They're talking about um, spiritual food or food given to, the, to idols and 
listen to verse 23. He tells them, all things are legitimate, permissible, and we're, to free, and we're free to do anything we please, but not all things are helpful, expedient, or profitable. I, wrote, I underlined profitable because it's a P word. But no, not really. I didn't. I just happened to <laughs> underline that one. He said, all things are legitimate, but not all things are constructive to character and edifying to spiritual life. And you know, as I was um, listening to the Lord, he was telling me, remove obstructions in your thinking that's clogging up your heart. Now, I know this time of year, we think about cleansing and clearing out and not just ourselves, but our houses. <laughs> but So he said, it's time for a cleanse. Release and let go of attitudes that give off an offensive odor and are a result of unresolved offense in your heart. And I said last week, and I want to say it again, in Luke 17, 1, Jesus warned, he instructed the disciples and he told them, he warned them, he said, that there will be temptations and snares and traps. Can you see a trap coming? Not all the time. Otherwise, it would not be a trap. Got it? Okay. So he's saying, Jesus is telling us, I need you to be aware that this is coming. There will be snares to catch you. You know, have you ever gotten caught on something? And there will be traps. You're not going to see them. But they're set up to entice you to sin. And let me ask you something. When is offense sin? When it's held on to. When it starts to take root in your heart. Where you're no longer able to think out of your heart. You're thinking out of here. And I wrote down, but I'm free to think anything and do anything. I'm under grace. All things are permissible. But is it profitable? Keeping a hurt hidden over time affects and permeates every area of your life, and it becomes who you are. Okay. Justin and I were talking, and I told him, I said, if you've seen things a certain way all your life, you think that's the way it's supposed to be. You know, um, if I had, obviously I have a glass of water here, but if there was like... You know, if I'd have put something in it and I'd have said to you, is this clear water? Without anything to compare or look at, you would go, yeah, that's clear. But yet, I'd maybe I'd put some dirt in it or something to... He told a story one time about a pebble in his shoe. And that's what came up to me whenever I was thinking this. Let me tell you how this came out of. The Lord woke me up this past week and brought to my attention. And I love how he does this. He does this right as you're waking up, probably because I don't get my mind on anything else. So he's like, she's awake, is she awake, is she awake? And then he starts talking. But he brought to my attention somebody that I was actually upset with. I'm gonna use that word, because it's a nice word. I was just upset with them. And God knew that I was upset, and I knew that I was upset. And how did I know that I was upset? Because whenever I would see them, on my feed, I would pass them by just quickly because I was upset, you know. And, and he was saying, yes, everything is permissible, but is it all profitable? Is it profitable? Do you want, and I thought, the word that came to my head was just get by. And you can, you can just get by. He says, do you want to go through life just getting by or do you want to glorify? That got me out of bed. <laughs> Permissible is getting by, but it won't glorify. That won't be harvest. That won't be harvest in my life. And Justin talked about, I don't know why he kept a pebble in his shoe, and I don't know why we keep offense in our hearts sometimes, but he had a pebble in his shoe, and 
sometimes we just get busy and we think, oh, it's just a pebble, I could just keep going. It's your perception. He wants to change your perception about that permissible pebble in your life that is not that big of a deal. Nobody can see it. It's just in my shoe. It's just whatever. But you know what? Your perception up here will affect here, which will cause you to do something or not do something. Because of my personal relationship with God, because my heart longs to please my Father, my perception over time of that person I was upset with was no longer comfortable to me. And I pray that this morning, whatever that permissible pebble is in your shoe, in your heart, you will no longer be comfortable with. Because it may be permissible, but I'm telling you it is not profitable. And I had to get up, and, and um, I eventually talked to, I haven't talked to exactly that person, but I talked to a person, and I apologized, um, and, um, and, and I'm getting that right. But I was really brought back to what you get used to or accustomed to, and, and I know this is going to sound really deep, but I, I, I need to say this. What you have gotten used to or what you've gotten accustomed to will eventually kill or destroy you. Because there is one who desires harvest. He wants abundance and flourishing and he wants his glory to be revealed in you. But also there is one who desires your destruction. Can I just tell you that? And it can start with a pebble. Because what happened was he did leave it in there. He left it in his shoe, and it got embedded in his foot. It hurt for a little bit, but after walking on it, it's no big deal. Um, Skin grew over it, and it became a part of him, just like what I just said. Hurts, offenses, past pains, after a while, just kind of get embedded inside your heart. It just becomes a part of you. No big deal. Skin grows over it, but yet... After a period of time, you know what happened? There was infection. There was infection. And he ended up having to go to the doctor and had to have surgery to get the pebble removed. Some of y'all are maybe in a place where that pebble may just be in your shoe this morning. That's fine. Take your shoe off. Let's get rid of it. Some of y'all are in a place this morning where maybe that pebble has been embedded. And you don't even realize that it's affected everything about you. And you wonder why you respond the way you do about those people that, and the minute you start thinking like that, those people in that place, you know, what happened then? Uh, It's like, what happened? Wait a minute. You can start to sense it. You know what, you may not even sense it anymore, but somebody's sensing it. Trust me, somebody is sensing it. They're gonna go, you got a pebble in your shoe? You gotta get rid of it. And I, and I really sense this morning, he wants to get us past that. He really does. In order to make room for his harvest, in order to make room for days of glory and days of flourishing and days of abounding. Because I'm going to tell you what, making room is not just about you, it's about others. And that's what Paul was telling them. He said, if it offends them to do it, don't do it. For crying out loud, just don't do it. He said, I become all things to all men, but for what? So they can benefit, so that they can come to know Christ. Amen? God's so good, and he's so merciful to us. And here's the other thing. I could have just gotten instruction, which is what I really, you know, we like to do that. Like, just God, tell me what not to do, and I won't do it. Tell me what to do, and I'll do it. Just tell me. But it really comes down to he wants to have a personal relationship with you. You know, it's not about rules because they were all about the rules. Circumcised, not circumcised. Eat that food, don't eat that food. Just tell us what to do, you know. And, and it's interesting because in 1 Corinthians 8, he tells them, 
Oh, first of all, I like what he says. I need you to listen, and I need you to make up your mind about what I'm hearing, what you're hearing. Because he says that in verse 15 of chapter 10. He says, think over and make up your minds. You think about it. You need a personal re revelation. You, you've got to get a personal revelation. And that personal revelation doesn't come without having a personal relationship with him. Okay? That's how that perspective is going to get changed about that pebble. Otherwise, it's just a pebble that's no big deal. Okay? And a personal revelation will impel you, it'll compel you, it'll make you do something about it because you know the heart of the Father. And the heart of the Father is that you would glorify Him, not just for the sake of glorifying Him, but your life will be better so others' lives will be better because making room is not about you only. It's about others watching you. And He said to them, now about food offered to idols, of course we know that all of us possess knowledge concerning these matters. He said, but... Yet mere knowledge causes people to be puffed up, to bear themselves lawfully and be proud. But love, affection, and goodwill and benevolence edifies and builds, builds. It thinks of others, not in comparison or judging. That's, this is my words put in here. I wrote this down. Builds up, thinks of others, not in comparison or judging, but in love, causing you to grow. Now let me read what it says here. Edifies and builds up and encourages one to grow to his full stature. You were not edified and built up and encouraged and in your full stature until you have affected somebody else. Because love, which is God, is about people. That's God's favorite word. He told me. He said, I have a favorite word that starts with a P too. And I'm like, what is it? He said, people, yes. others. Yes. But you know what? He also has a P word that he hates. And it's called pride. Yeah. It's called pride. Yeah. Because pride just thinks of self. And he said, I don't want you to just have mere knowledge. I don't want you to have just mere knowledge. But love, affection, and goodwill. I don't want you to just think about, I'm making it to heaven, me and my God, we're getting there, me and my pebble, we're all good, because it's a permissible pebble, no big deal. But no, you're affecting others. Yeah. You're affecting others. You are a product. You, I, I'm a product of somebody else's revelation, but I need to be a product of my personal revelation with him. Yeah. But you're affecting others. Others are watching you, and that's what Paul was telling them. Sounds like a big responsibility. And it is. Um, I don't want to just be free to think and act and do how I want to. That's not why he set me free. That's not why he set me free. Um, there's a scripture in Galatians 4 or 5 that says that he purchased, <laughs> he purchased my freedom so that I might be adopted and have sonship and be recognized as his. Recognized means to be seen, glorifying God the Father, reflecting his goodness and his power and his presence. Amen. We've been purchased. We are free. We are free. We're free from the law. Amen? That's what it says. To purchase the freedom of those, that would be us, who were subject to the law, that we might be adopted and have sonship and be recognized. I know when people look at me, they recognize me. You are, they do. They recognize me, especially if I'm down south. You're, you're La Lumbre's daughter. That must be you. How do they know that I'm La Lumbre's daughter? Because I look like him. But not necessarily, because see, we're adopted. But because sometimes I act like him. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when they start to hear you talk, oh, yeah, or I know who your mother is. I recognize, because I'm glorifying yeah. them. And we're to glorify him. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. To reflect his goodness. 
reflect his goodness and his power and his presence. And in his presence, there's abounding. (laughs) And in his presence, there's flourishing. Hallelujah. Amen. Tag. You know, um, back in August, we were... um, we went away to get direction for 2018, and one of the things we were, in pr- we were, I was in prayer, and the Lord said, uh, for 2018, you need to get th- your, uh, the mic in your wife's hands more. Amen. Amen. You know, and like even with last week, we didn't, we, I mean, we don't really know exactly what each other's sharing this morning, you know, um, but the whole idea is because this is what we're out for, because that's God's desire for his people. It's not to say, oh, that sounds good, it's catchy, it's cool, yeah, no. No, this is God's desire since the beginning of time. Abounding and flourishing and, and, and his glory, his manifested presence and manifested goodness and power in the earth, that's been his desire all along. And so, so when we talk about that, it's not just something that we're holding. No, this is God's desire. You know, and the very thing that that pebble in your shoe is the very thing that's going to limit those things in your life. It's going gonna, it's gonna to bring limitations to your life. Go to Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54, verse 1. It says, sing, O barren one. You who did not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who did not travail with child. For the children of the desolate one will be more than the children of the married wife, says the Lord. Now now think about this. Here, the prophet is speaking and and he refers to a a desolate, a, a barren one, a desolate woman. And said that this barren one will eventually be more than the other. You see, what can happen if you're not careful is you being desolate or you being barren, you allow that to mark the harvest the rest of your life. Whatever label's been placed on you or whatever someone's called you, whatever's happened to you, whatever, all of a sudden, because you've been a barren woman so long, that ends up marking the rest of your life. And because of that, in your thought process, you can't step into harvest. Now, we have to understand something here is God is referring to his people. He's not talking about an individual woman. woman. He's talking about his people. He's talking about his people. And, and I love how, how he, he's interested, what Annette said, he's interested in people because this barren woman, it, wasn't a, it was to call her to no longer be barren any longer. God doesn't want you to be barren any longer, barren in your finances, barren in your marriage, barren uh, physically, barren emotionally. He doesn't want you to be bound and broken and continuing to go through these same cycles in life. So he goes to this woman and says, sing, O barren one, you who did not break forth, uh, you who did not hear, break forth into singing, cry aloud, you who did not travail with child. For the children of the desolate one will be more than the children of the married wife. Then the next verse says, enlarge the place of your tent. And let them stretch forth the curtains of your habitation. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left. And thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles. See, this barren woman, God is going to her and saying, look, you need to enlarge. What would go through a woman, that, and just think of the mindset. Someone has been barren for so long. You want me to enlarge? You want me to stretch forth the curtains of my habit? You want me to, 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 to increase? I don't have a reason to increase. So with this woman being barren, what can happen is it is marking her. And he's saying, you know what? You got to enlarge, but I don't, I don't see anything growing. I don't see any changes happen. I don't see anything getting better. I don't see any changes here, God. I don't see. So why should I enlarge? And says you're going to break forth on the left hand and on the right and your seed. So what, is I, what do I hear the prophet saying to the barren woman? Don't look at where you are right now. Don't limit your future by where you've been because your past could be that pebble in the shoe. What someone did to you could be that pebble in the shoe. What someone said about you, what someone labeled you, what's happened is going to keep you. Well, why should I enlarge? Who me? Why me? 
Why me? Who You want me to enlarge? In verse 4, it says, fear not. I love how, how see, see, because he understood, God understood the, the, our mindset. God understands you. God understands when all of a sudden he comes to you with something that looks impossible. He comes to you with something that you couldn't imagine in yourself. He's coming to you something that you've never seen before or you've ever even really thought about before. So the first thing he says, you know, I want you to enlarge. I want you to break out on the left hand on the right. And your seed, which you don't have any to begin with, is going to be mighty and it's going to, it's going to reach the Gentiles. And so what happens is, is, is you get in this aspect of, okay, how is that going to happen? Fear. What does he say? Fear not. The word fear there is dread. But that's looking forward with anticipation with something negative. You know, now let's go through these. He tells her, fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed. Not be ashamed. The word ashamed there is to not be disappointed or delayed. It says, neither be thou confounded. What does the word confounded mean? It means to be wounded by insults or to be humiliated. Then it says, for thou shalt not be put to shame. That word shame here means to blush. It means to hide yourself. For thou shalt forget the shame of your youth. Now get this here. God is speaking something. He's want, wanting for glory, wanting abounding, wanted flourishing, and doesn't want this barren. He sees something different that this person doesn't see. He sees something different that you don't see. And immediately he says, fear not. Don't dread. Don't look forward with anticipation of something negative. Change your mindset. Making room, as Annette said last week, making room up here. Have, making room for harvest. You're going to have to make room. See, he's wanting harvest to happen in this woman's life. But you know what? She's going to have to make room and is going to have to do something with up here. So, so here the prophet through the Holy Spirit is saying, fear not. Don't dread this. Don't, don't be ashamed. Don't look at disappointment. Don't look at being delayed. Don't be confounded. Don't be humiliated. Don't, don't be, have, have shame on you. Don't try to hide yourself. This says, you will not forget that you shall forget the shame of your youth. What, what is he talking to her about here? You know what that means? It says, you're not even going to remember the emotions of the way it felt. You see, 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 God wants to reach into your life. You see, you, you, and what, what the Lord had in my heart and, and connected with Annette says, is, 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 is this pebble in the shoe is shame, yeah. can be shame. Right. Shame. Yeah. And he tells this woman, he goes, you're not even going to remember the emotions that it was like when you were barren. I, I connect that to Psalms 126. It says, when he turned our captivity, we were like them that dreamed. Meaning when I was no longer captive, all of a sudden it was like it never happened to me. And then, the, the, then it keeps saying here, it says, and you shall not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. You'll not remember. That word remember there is to not recollect what it was like when you were in exile. The word widowhood, and you tell me you see that in the, in the Old Testament, it's a metaphor. And it means, it means those, it means, it means God's people when they were in exile, meaning you no longer had a husband. And here God is telling this woman, you're going to enlarge? See, shame, being confounded, being humiliated, and dread were going to be the biggest things that were going to hinder her future. But, but there's an answer. What's the answer to shame? What's the answer to shame? Let's keep reading. Verse 5. For thy maker is thy husband. For thy maker is thy husband, and the Lord of hosts is his name, and the Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer, the God of the whole earth he is called. Verse 6, for the Lord has called you like a woman forsaken, grieved in spirit, and heart sore, even a wife wooed and won in youth when she is latter refused and scorned, says your God. Verse 7, for a brief moment I forsook you, but with great compassion and mercy I will gather to you me again. 
In a little burst of wrath, I hid my face from you for a moment, but with age enduring love and kindness, I will have compassion and mercy on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. For this is like the days of Noah to me, as I swore that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I will not be angry with you or rebuke you. Verse 10, for though the mountains shall depart and the hills be shaken and removed, yet my love and kindness shall not depart from you. Nor shall my covenant of peace and completeness be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. The answer to the pebble in the shoe, the answer to shame, the answer to the thought process is mercy. The answer, the answer for causing this year to be glorious, this year to be abounding, and this year to flourishing is realize you need to tap into his mercy. I, when, when, I hear, when I hear abounding and flourishing, I, I think of what God is speaking to this barren woman. You know what? You're going to be more. You're going to be greater than what you already are. You're going to be more than what you already are. But you know what? you got to stop limiting him with shame and fear, dread, and allowing your past to control you. I know what shame feels like. I know what shame, I know what shame feels like personally. I know what it feels like to be humiliated. I know how the enemy works and and belittling you and, and making nothing of you. I know how that feels. I know how, and we all know how that feels, but you know what? But God does not want us to live there because if we live there, it will keep us from stepping into everything he wants us to walk in. Mercy is the answer to shame. So, so if, we, if we want to be flourishing and we want abounding and we want increase and we want to change the world around us, we need to make room for mercy. You need to get the, you know, as she talked about that, that cup with the glass, you need to, you need to uh, pour mercy in so, so this shame no longer has effect in your life where, where the emotions of shame no longer control you. The things that came with what, whatever you've been going through, whatever you, you, you have faced the last 5, 10, 20 years is no longer a hindrance in your life. The answer to wherever you are is mercy. The answer to shame is mercy. The answer to humiliation is mercy. The answer to him fulfilling everything he promised you is mercy. Let me read in, let's go to uh, Lamentations. Lamentations. Three. Verse 17. Prophet writing here in Lamentations and in verse 17 it says, Thou hast removed my soul far from peace. And he goes, I forgot prosperity. And I said, my strength and my hope has perished from the Lord, remembering my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall. That just means bitterness. Meaning because of what I've gone through, I'm bitter. Because of what I faced, I'm bitter. Verse 20, my soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. Verse 21, this I recall to my mind, therefore I have I hope. Meaning even though I've seen all these things, But when I recall to my mind, I have hope. It is the Lord's mercy that we're not consumed. It's because his passions fail not. They're new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. The answer to shame is mercy. Mercy. And see, a lot of times, like Annette said, it's kind of like, it's kind of like those things that you don't really think about. It's kind of like in the back of your mind and you don't even know that shame's controlling you. But how come you won't go there anymore? How come you don't do that? How come you don't revisit those things? Why? Because some, somewhere in the back of your mind, you made, you, you kind of said, no, I don't want any part of that. And the next thing you know, you make that become God's voice and it's not God's voice. Just because you don't want to let him come in and push all the negative things out. See, we have to make room for everything he wants to do in our lives. Shame. Shame. David said in Psalms 5 or 7, he goes, you know, the world does that. He says, but for me, I'll return to the, your house of mercies. Hallelujah. I'll return to the house of mercy. 
where your mercies are. They do that. But you know, for me, I come to the house where I find your tender mercies. You know, it, we have to pursue his mercy. Don't try to per pursue perfection in your life. Pursue mercy. Don't try to pursue trying to do everything right. Pursue mercy. Pursue mercy. In Hebrews chapter 2 verse 17 says that we have a merciful high priest. A merciful high priest. See, we have to disconnect from shame and connect with mercy. Disconnect from shame so we can connect with mercy. Mercies are new every morning. Don't let shame, the humiliation, to keep you from being the one that's supposed to be greater. We have a merciful high priest. Go to Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2, 1 says, And you hath he quickened. And you hath he quickened. Who were dead in trespasses and sins. This is Ephesians 2, verse 1. And you hath he quickened. Who were dead in trespasses and sins. Where in times past you walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince and the power of the air. The spirit now that worketh in the children of disobedience. Hallelujah. Among whom also we had our conversations in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. You see, when you live according to the lust of your flesh, when you live according to the course of the rest of the world, that's living that lifestyle will produce shame in your life. It produces shame. There's, there's no, it, it's not a... It, it, <laughs> To follow the enemy's ways will never produce fruitful living, fruitful emo emotions in your life. But it says that you were dead in your trespasses. Hallelujah. But verse 4 says, but God who is rich in mercy. But God who is rich in mercy. In mercy, you see, the answer to the lust of this world, the answer to the conversations of the world, the answer to everything that you deal with in the world, the answer to, to your faults and your failures is realizing that God is rich in mercy. He's rich in mercy. Allow him to pour his mercy into your life this morning and deliver you from shame. Allow him to pour his mercy into your heart to deliver you from the failures of your past. Allow him to pour mercy in. This first Sunday of 2018, allow mercy to, to shine down on you. Allow mercy to rise up out of your heart. Allow mercy to overflow in your heart and into where it affects your mind. See, you could be sitting there this morning and you hear what I'm saying and, you know, and, and, and you're hearing it in your heart, but in your head you're like, well, my life hasn't changed. Well, how's this going to work out? They let me down. This person let me down. I've let myself down. And so you can be hearing the word, hearing the word, hearing the word, but not receiving what the word is saying. Receive mercy. It's the answer to shame. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go to John chapter 15. Hallelujah. Jesus is, our, is a merciful high priest. Jesus is mercy. I'm going to read John 15, but I, where, where it talks about him, I'm going to put the word mercy. Just let the Holy Spirit minister to your heart. Just, just things, just open your heart and open your mind as Annette prayed before she started. I'm telling you, this isn't just about you, but this is about your, this is about your children. This is about the, this, this community. It's about everyone that you're called to affect. Allow mercy to, to go off on the inside of your heart. Hallelujah. He is an age enduring love for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse three. Now you are clean through the word 
that mercy has spoken unto you. Abide in mercy and mercy will abide in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in mercy. No more can you except you abide in mercy. Mercy is the vine and you are the branches. He that abides in mercy and mercy in him, the same brings forth much fruit, flourishing and abounding. For without mercy, you can do nothing. If a man abides not in mercy, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them to the fire and they are burned. You see, it's not God that gathers them and casts them to the fire, it's men. How, what, what men or what people in this world are you allowing to destroy your life? What things are you allowing to destroy your life? It's not God because it says if we abide in mercy, we'll bear much fruit. But it says if we don't abide in him, what happens is this world system will gather you for itself. Hallelujah. If you abide in mercy and mercy's words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is the father of mercy glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be mercy's disciples. As the father of mercy has loved me as mercy, so has mercy loved you. Continue, hallelujah, in mercy's love. Hallelujah. If you keep mercy's commandments, you shall abide in mercy's love, even as mercy has kept the father of mercy's commandments and abide in the mercy's love. These things has mercy spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is mercy's commandment that you love one another as mercy has loved you. Greater love has no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. See, this mercy is vertical and it's horizontal. It's a mercy that we receive to change us to where mercy is released to change them. But you know what? You'll always be a barren person if you don't realize it's time to enlarge and don't let shame keep you in there any longer because you're called for amazing things and mercy is the answer to abundance in your life. Go to 1 Peter and I'll close with this. 1 Peter. You may pick up on this next week. 1 Peter. Mercy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Disconnect from shame and connect with mercy. Hallelujah. Connect with mercy and allow mercy to heal your heart. Allow mercy to paint a new picture on your heart. Allow mercy to, to resurrect dreams. Allow mercy to heal your marriage. Hallelujah. Allow mercy. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter two, verse four says, and the Amplified says, come to him. You say, come to mercy then. Living stone, which men tried and threw away, but which is chosen and precious in God's sight. Come and like living stones, be yourselves built into a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable and pleasing to God through Jesus Christ. For thus it stands in scripture, behold, I am laying in Zion a chosen precious chief cornerstone and he, mercy, Hallelujah. And he who, sorry, he who believes in mercy, who adheres to and trusts in and relies on mercy shall never be disappointed or put to shame. Let me read that again. For thus it stands in scripture. Behold, I am laying in Zion a chosen, honored, precious, chief cornerstone. Man. Uh, what is it, a cornerstone? It's what you build your life on. It's what you build. It's the most important brick of a foundation. It's the most important part of a foundation. And I want to encourage you today, it's the most important part of your life. Jesus is a merciful high priest. 
And here it talks about that I'm laying in Zion a chosen, precious, chief cornerstone. And he who believes in him, who believes in the cornerstone, who believes in mercy, who adheres to trust and relies on him, shall never, shall never be disappointed or put to shame. I don't know about you, but I don't want shame to control my life any longer. I don't want a pebble to affect my life any longer. I don't want offense to affect my life any longer. I don't want the decisions of my past to affect me any longer. But why? Because Jesus is a merciful high priest and we have a precious, we have a precious chief, the most important cornerstone. And if we believe that Jesus is mercy, it says if we believe in him, it said that we would never be disappointed or put to shame. Never be disappointed or put to shame. Allow the revelation of that to permeate your heart as we begin this year. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Shame comes in so many different forms. I know people today that won't step foot in church because of shame. I know people that won't, won't talk to family members because of shame. And on the outside, yeah, everything looks great. Even they, sitting in church and, 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 yet, and yet even saying amen, but yet, yet deep in their heart, there is, there is a blockage. Deep in the heart, there is a hindrance. And the answer to every hindrance is mercy. It's mercy. Thank you, Father. Everyone stand to your feet. Thank you, Father. Thank you for mercy. Hallelujah. His mercies are new every morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. His mercies are new every morning. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hmm. Hallelujah. I just wanted to declare this over you before I go forward. Just heard this in my heart. Sing. People, to, people of heritage of faith. Break forth into singing and cry aloud. You who did not, you have not flourished. But you realize, people of heritage of faith, that you are more and you are greater than what you've ever been. So this morning, enlarge the place of your tent. This morning, let it stretch forth the curtains of your habitation. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, strengthen thy stakes, for thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and your seed shall inherit the Gentiles. Hallelujah. But from this day forward, fear not. This day forward, don't be ashamed. This day forward, don't be confounded. This day forward, you shall not be put to shame. For you shall from this day forward forget the shame of the past. And you will not remember the bondage that you were in before. Why? Because God, your maker, the father of mercy, the father, hallelujah, the father of mercy is your husband. And I declare that his love and kindness shall not depart from you. Nor shall his covenant of peace and completeness be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Mercy. Mercy. Hallelujah. If you're here this morning and you say, Pastor, and you be honest and you say, Pastor, shame has marked my life in 2018. You may say, Pastor, shame has marked my life for the last 5, 10, 20 years. 
offense has marked my life. I mean, we could label shame, we could label offense, so many different things, but what is that pebble in your shoe that you've allowed to become part of you? Just like that desolate woman was allowing her being barren to mark her harvest. Hallelujah. I want you to come to the altar. I want you to come to the altar. If there's been that pebble in your shoe, spiritually, so to speak, and shame, regret, hurt, offense, unforgiveness has marked your life, I want you to make your way to the altar. And let's start this year off. Not just those that come to this altar, but every single one of us embracing mercy in a brand new way. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Annette, can you come up here with me? Thrive Group leaders, if you could come up here with me. Hallelujah. Thrive Group leaders, come up here, please. Hallelujah. Rick, come up here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Let's just worship the Lord before we pray over them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
and it's truth that removes somebody from iniquity. It's mercy and it's truth that removes iniquity. And then by the fear of the Lord, by the knowledge of that mercy, by the knowledge of Christ, a person is set free from the bondage of sin. They walk habitually and live habitually in the blessing, in the abundance. They live the abundant life. It's mercy and truth, the Bible says, that removes you from sin. So cry out to Jesus. Cry out to Jesus. Cry out to mercy. Jesus is mercy. Jesus is mercy. In John chapter 8, Jesus is teaching in the synagogue, and they catch a woman caught in the act of adultery. She's guilty. They want justice. They've got pebbles. They've got stones in their hands, and they're going to condemn her. They're going to send her to hell. But they look at Jesus, and they say, what do you say, Jesus? What do you say, Mr. Mercy? And Mr. Mercy says in the name of Jesus, he among you is without sin. Cast that first stone. They drop those stones. They back out. He goes over to that woman who has just been condemned to death, who has just been told she's going to hell, who's just been trapped in darkness all her life. And what does he say to her? Where are your accusers? Where is your shame? Where is the accuser of shame? And she says, there's no one here that accuses me. And Jesus says, I don't accuse you either. Oh, glory be to God. And then the love of God came over her. The love of mercy came over her. And he said, daughter, go and sin no more. She was relieved that day. Those chains of darkness came off of her that day. There was no more shame in the name of Jesus. And then Jesus turned around. And he looked at, the, the, he looked at everybody that was in the crowd watching. And he looked at those religious leaders. Mercy and truth is what frees you from sin. And he looked at them and he said, I am the light of the world. Anyone that cries out and comes to me, 
I'll give them the light of life. I'll give them Zoe. I'll give them my, my character. I'll give them my nature on the inside. That nature of life. It'll break those chains of darkness in the name of Jesus. It'll break that sickness. It'll break those things that have been controlling you. It'll give you power in the name of Jesus. Jesus is power. Life is power. It removes the darkness. It removes the chains in the name of Jesus. You don't have to live in sickness anymore. You don't have to live in chains of darkness and in chains of shame anymore. All you got to do is receive Jesus. Just say, Jesus, come into my heart. Is there anyone out here who's, who's never accepted Jesus? If there's anyone out here who's been trapped in darkness all their life, you have, you, you know the sin, you know what's out there, but you can't break it. That's what Jesus is. That's what mercy is. It's the power to break sin. That's what it's all about. I need power. I need life on the inside of me. And man, once you get that life on the inside of you, you never go back in the name of Jesus. Is there anyone here, anyone in the TV audience, anyone here who wants that power, who says, I need that mercy? All you got to do is cry out for it. Just say, Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my heart, Jesus. You died for my sins. You paid the price for my sin, Jesus. We took communion today. That's what you did when you were up there on that cross. You took that grief. You took that shame. You took that sorrow in the name of Jesus. I believe you died for my sins. And that spirit that raised you from the dead, hallelujah, that's the spirit I want in my life. That same, that same spirit, Jesus, I want it. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Come into my heart, Jesus. I receive you, Jesus. Cry out for 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 Jesus. And Jesus said this. He says, once I come into you, because I'm one in the Father, and the Father is in me, and we will be together one, one and the same, life living on the inside of you. He says, once you become my disciple, you'll learn the truth. And oh, and that knowledge of that life, that knowledge of walking in that life, hallelujah, it'll set you free. You won't be in change of darkness anymore. Is there anyone who wants to say that prayer? Just raise your hand, hallelujah. Lift it high, hallelujah. There's no shame here. There's joy. Cry out for it. Cry out for it. And I'm just going to say, you can just say this prayer. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you, Jesus. I receive that spirit that raised you from the dead. Oh, hallelujah. The past is the past. You've given me my future now. I take my future now. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Use me, Jesus. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, Jesus. I receive your life, Jesus. I'm never the same. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. His mercies are new every morning. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you that your mercies are new every morning. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, if you're watching by way of internet, you can, you can just send us an email and let us know when to get in contact with you. If you pray that here today, you know, there's a, there's a little thank you, or there's a little uh, first time visitor card, even though you not be, might not be a visitor, just make a, uh, just put your name on that and just put salvation on it. We want to get in contact with you to put some resources into your hands that can better equip you Amen. to be an overcomer. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Rick, do you have anything? Hallelujah, good. Hallelujah. God is so good. <laughs> Hallelujah. While I was praying, while I was praying for people here, bring someone next week that needs healing. And uh, bring someone next week that needs healing. Hallelujah. I was going to offer a, a, an altar call for healing, but the Lord said, I, I want you to, there's going to be some things I'm going to have you talk about next week. Um, I'm going to have a healing, be a healing service. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For your shame you shall receive double. Amen. And uh, it's important to grab a hold of Scripture. When you hear a message like that right there, because, uh, you know, that's the enemy's tactic. He wants to belittle you. 
He That's wants right. to, he wants to um, make you feel unworthy. He wants you to go backwards always. He doesn't always. want you to go in the future. Uh, but you got to have something to hang on to. The scripture that I think it, that came to my spirit, man, was Pastor asked that was just for your shame. And I prayed that over uh, James and his wife just a minute. But your shame for whatever the devil, because it's the come devil the, is the one yeah. who has tried to put yeah. you under and keep you walking in all that God has intended for you. You need to shame him. You need to shame him and allow the double everything that he's stolen. So if there's things that have, and this is real important, specifically if it's in the area of finances and the area of uh, relationships, the the next relationship would be twice as good. The next job will be twice as good. Come on. The finances is twice as much. You've got to lay hold of it. Grab it because that's the word of the Lord because that happens right after Jesus had come. So you got to understand that. So take it, receive it, and allow that to be dominant in your life during this next season. Don't draw back from it. Hallelujah. 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 That's it. Before we dismiss, just a, you, just a couple of reminders. Tonight, worship night. Six o'clock in here. You know, man, what an awesome time to come together for an hour and a half and just worship God and and just flow with the Holy Spirit. So I encourage you to be here tonight, you know, at six o'clock. We'll have an awesome time together as our worship team leads us to the throne room of God. And, you know, also, if you've been visiting for the last several months, uh, we haven't had a membership class or connect class, but just be looking for the volunteer announcement, I mean, the, the announcement video. And uh, it's going to be in February it will be our uh, next connect class and other things that we'll be offering. Also, the third Sunday of this month, is our, um, will be a Thrive Group. So a lot of the leaders here are Thrive Group leaders. So if you're not involved in a Thrive Group, we have them the third Sunday of every month. I encourage you to get connected with the Thrive Group. Also next Sunday is our, um, is our project um, offering, our building offering, which we're raising, we're, we're um, believing God for a van and there's some media equipment that we need um, to become more excellent in what we're doing. And, and just think just that we only had one offering. We've already had 20, uh, 20% come in already. So praise God, amen. Amen. And so and we're excited about where we're going as a church this year. And, and if we don't know you yet, we want to get to know you. And, and so if you're looking for a church home, we want to get to know you. Hallelujah. Love you guys. Have an amazing rest of the day. We'll see you at 6 o'clock tonight. If not, we'll see you Wednesday night as Annette ministers on Wednesday night. God bless. Later. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.